Yep, can see your screen. Okay, cool. Um, so, hey everyone, we are the FMI Music team here at ASDRP. Our principal investigator is Sahar, and the aim of our project is to understand brain networks associated with emotional responses to music. I'm Ayan, and I'll be one of the presenters for today. Hi guys, I'm Jungin. I'll be the other presenter today. So let's start off with an explanation about fMRI. So fMRI is a technique that measures brain activity by detecting changes associated with blood flow. It uses MR imaging to measure the tiny changes in blood flow that take place in an active part of the brain. There are three main uses for fMRI. The first use is examining the brain's functional anatomy. The second use is evaluating the effects of stroke or other disease and, guide and guiding brain treatment. The final use is detecting abnormalities within the brain that cannot be found with other imaging techniques. fMRI is especially known to measure blood oxygen levels along with the brain's metabolic activity. And so the primary way we can view fMRI data is through a comprehensive neuroimaging analysis library called FSL, which stands for fMRIB uh, software library, which includes various software programs that help in analyzing fMRI, normal MRI, and diffusion MRI data and contains uh, Melodic, which is a software that we will talk about. It's a software that does individual component analysis on fMRI data, and also FSLIs, which is a program for used for viewing fMRI data. And on the right, you can see both anatomical and functional images. Uh, anatomical image shows us the physical structure of the brain. And you can see that the image in the top right is in black and white. Uh, the, light part of the image shows white matter and then the darker part of the regions, uh, darker regions of the uh, image show the gray matter. Basically the white matter are the myelinated, uh, myelinated regions of the brain and then the gray matter are the unmyelinated. And these basically show us what regions uh, show us, indicate to us the regions of the brain, the age of the subject, uh, other stuff like health conditions of the subject. And below you can see the functional image and that's what our study is arguably more concerned with. The functional image basically shows you the activity of the brain. As you can see, uh, the functional image is generally lower resolution than the anatomical image. However, it should be noted that the functional image of fMRI still has very high spatial resolution compared to uh, other functional uh, neuroimaging techniques. However, it does fall behind on the temporal resolution. As Ayan mentioned, the fMRI tracks the blood oxygen level, and this is uh, shown on the functional image through the, uh, through the color. So the wider regions and then the gray, uh, the gray regions. And uh, through pre-processing, uh, we can actually view, with, uh, view specifically which regions are more active since this is kind of hard to look at uh, with the, which is a normal, yeah, just straight from it. So our study primarily looks at the brain's auditory network. So what exactly is the auditory network? The auditory network works via auditory messages that are conveyed to the brain via two types of pathways. The first pathway is the primary auditory pathway, which exclusively carries messages from the cochlea, that is the inner ear, which is part of your ear that receives sound impulses from your surroundings. The second pathway is the non-primary pathway, which carries all types of sensory messages. The auditory network is across the two hemispheres of the brain. It is located on the superior portion of the temporal lobe of each hemisphere. Each part of the network is interconnected on the same and on the opposite cerebral hemispheres. If any part of the auditory cortex is damaged, it leads to a loss of any awareness of sound, but an ability to react reflexively to the sound that remains. Now we're going to start talking about the actual data that uh, we studied. And before that, we're, I'm going to talk about the specific format that fMRI data is structured in. Now there are primarily two forms of data, uh, two, file, two formats of fMRI data, and that's DICOM and NIFTY. DICOM stands for Digital Imaging and Com Communications in Medicine, and it is a 2D image of the fMRI scan, including metadata that tells you about the parameters of the machine, the uh, extra information about the subject or the tasks they're doing or the researchers uh, or like the experimental experimenters themselves. Uh, NIFTY files are 3D files uh, and NIFTY stands for Neuroimaging Information Informatics Technology Initiative. And it is a 3D data type uh, and 
it is usually paired with a JSON file that includes the parameters that I mentioned previously with the DICOM data. And uh, BIDS is a standard of organization for a neuroimaging study, and it is used uh, primarily for the ease of sharing and organizing. So this is shared among uh, within the neuroimaging uh, field. And it primarily uses nifty files. And this was the structure that we used. So we also use nifty files. And the bid structure divides uh, the files into different subjects, different tasks, and different your imaging tools. And on the bottom right, you can see kind of like the structure that you will encounter with bids. So our data set. For our study, we obtained structural data from the data set used by the paper, Dynamic Intersubject Neural Synchronization Reflects Effective Responses to Sad Music. We got the data set from the neuroimaging data platform, Open Neuro, and we converted the functional data and uploaded it to our server. The data set explores the brain activity in 40 subjects, listening to music that evokes specific emotional responses. Functional data or functional connectivity of the brain measures its neuronal activity. Structural data or structural connectivity of the brain measures the anatomical structure. We need both of these types of data so we can find a correlation between the two and having both for analysis would make our results more accurate. Looking ahead, we ultimately want to use this data set to analyze brain activity when either happy or sad music is played. Okay, so let's actually talk about the, uh, the pre-processing steps that we took. Now, uh, fMRI prep constituted a major portion of the pre-processing work that fMRI music did. FMRI PrEP is an fMRI pre-processing pipeline uh, developed by neuroimaging pre-processing tools uh, called uh, knee preps. And it uh, uses a combination of multiple pre-processing pipelines such as AFNI and uh, FSL Free Surfer to perform structural and anatomical pre-processing on the raw fMRI data. This pre-processing step allowed us to view and analyze fMRI data better and made data more available uh, for machine learning analysis, data analysis, which is the next step for our research. Now, implementing fMRI prep uh, involved Docker, and Docker is basically a program that creates isolated environments uh, to run fMRI prep. In. Now, the reason we need Docker is because fMRI prep, along with a lot of neuroimaging uh, pre-processing pipelines, have a lot of dependencies. Uh, so for fMRI prep specifically, it has FSL, Free Surfer, uh, ANTS, and a, lot of, and a lot of other programs. And so these uh, dependencies might have different, uh, might have conflicting, uh, might have conflicting, uh, sorry, might have com conflicting compatibility issues with the operating system. And Docker basically creates an isolated environment called a container. Uh, to run the fMRI prep and so we don't run into these issues. Now fMRI prep offers structure and functional pre-processing and these are the list of the pre-processing steps that it does for us uh, and Ion will go more into these later on. And other softwares that we use included micro MRI, MRI Pro GL which converted DICOM files to Nifty and it also allowed us to view fMRI data. FSL is another library that I previously mentioned. It contains melodic, which is used for uh, running ICA, and FSLIs, which is used for viewing fMRI data. But aside from those two, there are a lot of programs that FSL contains that can be used to analyze fMRI, MRI, and uh, diffusion MRI uh, data. And so you see here uh, some of the outputs um, or like some of the pre-processing that uh, fMRI does on the top is basically shows the correlation between brain regions with the functional data and the magnitude of those correlations. And on the bottom, you can see the patient's brain mapped onto basically a template of a basically a template brain. Uh, so the actual shape of the brain is set, but the, like the different drawings on it are from the patient. So running fMRI prep. fMRI prep was successfully implemented on 39 subjects through the use of the Docker container as mentioned by Jean Yun in the previous slide. The pipeline produced field map correction, head motion correction, and susceptibility distortion estimation derivatives to correct distortion between functional and anatomical data. The results are outputted in derivatives, which shows the complete pre-processed data. fMRI prep displays images after head motion correction 
slice timing correction, and it's aligned into the same subject space. So going back in all these corrections I just mentioned that are done by fMRI prep, there are a couple of important ones which I will be discussing. The first is field map correction, which reduces variation in activated regions during motor or auditory tasks across subjects. The second is head motion correction, which corrects the motion tracking of the brain using optical measurement of facial features. The third is susceptibility distortion correction, which corrects the magnetic field distortions created by the susceptibility effects resulting in variations in the external magnetic field across the patient. The fourth one is slice timing correction that corrects slice dependent delays, which are achieved by shifting the time series of each slice by temporarily aligning all slices to a reference time point. We conducted pre-processing on our data since fMRI data requires pre-processing in order to remove unwanted artifacts. Unwanted artifacts are data flaws that are caused by unwanted factors in the data collection. And an example of this is motion correction. Pre-processing is also required for transforming the data into a standard format. So after pre-processing, we obviously had to do quality control. And one major quality of life advantage of fMRI prep is that it made quality control a lot easier. And that is through HTML files that included a detailed report of the pre-processed outputs of fMRI prep. Now this allowed our researchers to quickly go through every subject and efficiently uh, determine if they should be rerun or we can proceed with uh, the next step for pre-processing which we will discuss uh, later on. Now the HTML file contained a lot of things. It contained pretty much the output of all the pre-processing steps that Ayan mentioned, and we'll look at those images later on. And we, uh, by consulting different online resources, we uh, formulated these uh, guidelines that you can see on the screen, and we'll kind of go over them as we look at the different outputs on the following slides. Um, and one of them, and one of the major problems that we encountered during quality control is with susceptibility distortion correction, which basically attempts to map the functional data onto the anatomical outline of the brain. And that basically was like in multiple subjects, there were a lot of problems with that, uh, basically with either the distortion or the correction uh, being too dark or us having like random protrusions that were really unnatural. Um, so yeah, and our solution to those was just rerunning the subjects. Now here uh, you can see a successful implementation of surface reconstruction. Now what this does is basically you get outlines, the red and the blue lines uh, that uh, signify different boundaries. So the red outline basically is the boundary of the brain. So it encompasses, it's supposed to encompass the entire brain and you can see that it does. The blue outline is supposed to be the uh, boundary between the white and the gray matter. And if you look closely, uh, it does do that. So we can conclude that this is a successful implementation of uh, surface reconstruction. Now on the left here, you can also see, uh, on the left here, you can see susceptibility distortion correction. Now this is a successful implementation of it, as you can see, because all the brains, all the scans of the brain uh, fit the red outlines remotely uh, with high accuracy. And uh, there, and you don't see any unnatural uh, features that might lead to, that might be concluded as uh, flaws. On slide, uh, on the right, however, you can see there's a little bulb uh, and this is the functional image mapped onto the anatomical outlines. You can see that there are bulbs and uh, parts of the functional image that does not fit in to the anatomical outline. So this was a this was a subject that we considered for rerunning uh, later on. Now slide thirteen uh, it showcases one of our the major problems that we had, and that's with uh, susceptibility distortion correction. Uh, on the top, you can see that the outlines do not match the brain perfectly, since you can see there's like a hole in the middle uh, for some of the outlines. And on the bottom was a problem that we encountered with several of our uh, subjects where we had a random protrusion on the brain and that seemed unnatural and we could not proceed with this. So with subjects with problems like this, we had to rerun uh, with fMRI prep again. So another tool we used for quality control was IC Aroma which is a data-driven method to identify and remove motion-related IC components from our fMRI data. 
We use this tool to extract hidden factors within our data by transforming a set of variables to a new set that is maximally independent. It is used for removing artifacts and separating sources of brain signals. IC Aroma can also extract noise from functionally measuring images. Our use of ICA was specifically aimed at selecting motion-related components from the FSL melodic output. FSL is a software library containing image analysis tools for structural, functional, and diffusion MRI brain imaging data. Melodic is the tool from FSL that runs ICA, which was talked about on the previous slide. On the right, you can see a group of subjects that have been run by ICA. Okay, so let's talk about the results uh, and the progress that our team made. So we successfully implemented FMI prep on Docker, and that was a big step for us since that was a major portion of our pre-processing. And, and we also uh, successfully ran uh, pre-processing on all 40 subjects. And above on the image, you can see that those are the folders according to bids format of those 40 subjects. And we were able to we were able to uh, run quality control on most of these subjects, and uh, the ones that we found flaws in are on their way to be reprocessed. We re preprocessed, and I believe that has been done mostly too. And we finally figured out a way to run melodic ICA on our personal machines for these subjects for the final step of preprocessing, and we already began this as well. So, what are we aiming to do for the future? The first thing we would like to do is to finish rerunning our data that we detected faults in during quality control. We want this data pre-processed so then we can move on to processing and analysis. The second thing we would like to proceed with is machine learning algorithms for data analysis once our pre-processing and processing is complete. The ultimate aim of our project is to be analyzing this data set to provide insight into how stimulus-driven changes in activity and connectivity in the brain correlate to emotional enjoyment and intensity. Lastly, we would like to thank Sahar for all the support and guidance she provided uh, for us throughout this project, as it would not have been uh, possible without her. We would also like to thank ASCRP for providing us with the platform to conduct this research. Thank you, well done. Uh, let me just emphasize that this project that uh, my team is doing is um, kind of a project that it's assigned to a PhD student as um, work for the thesis when they are doing their PhD or any postdoc that is joining any brain science department to do that because there is no cookbook there are so many errors it takes months and months and um, I am kind of blessed to have such a hard-working passionate researcher working in such an intense project that really is a research like you have to do it again and again till you find your own way when it comes to mri data and pre-processing especially the pre-processing pipeline there is no cookbook it's just you have to um, you know do a lot of work and just fail and then crash uh, especially like you know running on docker we're talking about 27 gb it was 27 gb right um ian john yeah the raw data uh, we're talking about the raw data, not even process and um, pre-process data. Uh, so there is a lot of hard work, and I think beside hard work is just a lot of passion that this team, every single one of them, it's not all about the two presenter, uh, every single one of them from last summer, they put so much hard work in that is requiring a lot and a lot of credit. It's just beyond. And they amaze me every day. I want to thank them for sticking to such a hard project and not giving up. Thank you. Well done. Well done. So proud. So ask if they have any question or if there's any part that they didn't understand. Yeah, so if anyone have any questions, please feel free to ask. Also shout out to the rest of the team who were presenting today. They were, they, they were made, they're fantastic. And I, I joined the team this semester and gave them wonderful help uh, for the past month and a half, I think. Yes, and you want to share that you were being late for the conference, but because your work is amazing, you got into. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, so they're going to uh, conference, even though um, they submitted their abstract way past <laughs> the deadline. Uh, but I think their work is so, so impressive that uh, they got into and they're making it a conference right next month. Um, so a lot of good thing for this team. And uh, I hope that um, we end up going to more conferences, hopefully uh, 2023 and a neuroimaging paper, right? Yeah, that's it. That's our aim. Uh, is the FSL library open source? Yes. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it is open source. Um, so in, um, in addition to that, I put the lab website. Um, team did a great job on publishing the blogs on neuroimaging tools and uh, pipelines. So please um, feel free to visit um, uh, Chan or um, Ayan, can you put a link to proper like the blog that we have for FSL here for Michael? Um, oh yeah, I'll put it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so everything team did a great, wonderful job of documenting each and every neuroimaging tools, which is really challenging. Yes, thank you. Um, and you can just like go through the pipeline and do that. Thank you, thank you. Well done, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and got fascinated by the brain. That's something that drives me every day, understanding more and more about brain. Okay, have a good night. And thank you again, team. Thank you. Absolutely. Hey, Sahar. Bye-bye. <laughs> night, night. Have a good night. Night, night. Thank you, everyone. Good job, y'all.